Welcome back, Achievement Hunters, to Dyson Sphere Program. In our last episode, we just finished automating the first three matrices, giving us access to 21 more achievements, totaling us at 31. Today, we're going to unlock the information matrix along with all of its research. Then we're going to set up Warper Production to get access to resources from outside the system so that the 50% resource multiplier stops being such a problem. This one may happen sooner for some people, but as you add more and more interstellar logistics, having 50 active vessels at a time will get you this first achievement. As we scale up, the demand for power will continue to increase. Across my three planets, I am now generating one gigawatt of power. Once you process lots of oil and hydrogen, like this deuterium fractionator I have set up here, it won't be long before you fill up 10 tanks with fluids. With information matrices in full production, we can unlock three more achievements from researching alone. They are Mechanical Frame 6, Communication Control Level 5, and Solar Sail Level 4. Before we continue, let me show you my strategy for Warper Production. I have three blueprints that I use to create warpers, both for myself and for all of my facilities. The first blueprint makes graviton lenses. The second blueprint makes quantum chips. The third puts them both together, creates gravity matrices, then converts those into warpers. There are also some other factories that are required before all of these can work. We need an active production of hydrogen, deuterium, proliferators, organic crystals, and sulfuric acid. Once everything is set up and running at 100%, I'm able to produce almost 10 warpers per second, more than enough to supply my entire base. If we look at my map, my system only has about 600,000 iron ore left, with everything fighting over it. With a steady production of warpers, it's time to fly out and find some more resources. Not only that, warping and the universal travel that comes with it unlocks more achievements. Once you start expanding your logistics network to new planets, it will open up more transportation routes, which is what triggers this next achievement. Landing on five planets is pretty simple. While you're in the new system, you may as well land on each of the planets there. Normally you collect soil by placing foundations everywhere, but dropping machines and flattening the elevated terrain will give it as well. Since we're not using foundations, it's actually easier to keep track of when you hit 4 million if you look at the bottom right of the screen. Once you start producing lots of strange matter, you're going to need more sources of hydrogen and deuterium. Each gas giant can support 40 orbital collectors total. This achievement only needs you to drop down 10. As you continue to increase production, the green power achievement will eventually unlock. This occurs when production of electromagnetic turbines averages 12 per second for a whole hour. By the way, Green, in this case, has nothing to do with the environment. It's a reference to the fact that most of us call these green motors and when they can fill a green belt. Like the setup I have with my warpers, I use a set of blueprints to automate the production of small carrier rockets. This begins the final challenge of finishing the game, creating a Dyson Sphere using rockets alone. Small carrier rockets are a combination of three components, deuterium fuel rods, quantum chips, and Dyson Sphere components. Since I already have two blueprints to make the quantum chips and the deuterium fuel rods, 
The blueprint for rockets has the job of making the Dyson Sphere components. The only other blueprint I need is for solar sail production. We'll want to keep this one separate since we'll eventually need lots of those once we start launching solar sails after the game is complete. Since I don't have a lot of room in my starting system, I moved all of this production to the new star. I will, however, send these rockets back since it's only appropriate that I finish the game where it all started. At this point, let's do a little math to see what we need to hit mission complete. Every rocket that I send into our little Dyson Sphere produces 96 kilowatts of energy. A ray receiver running at 100% efficiency using a graviton lens will produce 12 critical photons per minute, but requires approximately 240 megawatts of power. However, this isn't even counting how much Dyson Sphere energy is lost from ray transmission efficiency. Even if you maxed out that technology as far as you could, you'd still end up requiring 300 megawatts per ray receiver on your Dyson Sphere. That means for each fully functional ray receiver, you need to launch 3,000 rockets. If you're producing one rocket per second, well, then that's not too bad. It will only take a little under an hour to hit that mark. However, my whole blueprint setup to produce rockets only makes one every five seconds, meaning I would need to stamp down five of them to reach that point. Even after reaching that point where the Dyson Sphere is producing 300 megawatts, at a rate of 12 critical photons per minute, it would still take us four hours to reach our target goal of 2,800 photons. If you're wondering why I didn't say 4,000 photons, that's because proliferation really helps us out with this step. In short, this is going to take a while. The only thing we can really do to speed things up is to increase our rocket production. While you're working on all of this, eventually you'll get the Light a Star in the Milky Way achievement. This occurs a short while after you start your very first Dyson Sphere. A little while later, you'll get another achievement once your Dyson Sphere hits 200 megawatts of power. Remember the reverse axis planet from the previous episode? When I looked for another system to expand my rocket production, I found this one that has two tidal locked planets. With an ever-increasing rocket production, it's time to make Universe Matrixes. Let's jump forward in time to when I have everything I need. After spending more than an hour building and launching rockets, we're now down to the last moments. If we did everything correctly, Mission Complete should unlock at least six achievements. Success! Now let us review what we got. Complete the game without gathering rare veins. Complete the game without using foundations. Complete the game without launching a solar sail. Complete the game in under 25 hours? Well, I didn't intend for that to happen. We'll get back to that in a second. Complete the game with 50% resource difficulty. Complete the game itself. And complete the game without dismantling the landing capsule. I didn't plan on finishing this game in under 25 hours, but it goes to show you that if I can hit mission complete in that time with all of those handicaps, then finishing the game in under 10 hours looks a lot more plausible. I'm glad we got this far together, because this is where the end game begins. To recount after today's work, we now have a total of 52 achievements. We're halfway through to our objective of getting a 100% completion rate. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.